Hey guys, happy Friday night. Uh, thank you all so much for tuning in, for bearing with me as I prepare my guest, Akeem Moss, uh, for the, what's ahead. So the night ahead, uh, he's had a long day of work <laughs> in the newly reopened city. So I thank him for coming after work hours. I'm giving you a thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, no. No, 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 no. He 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 doesn't need the big hit. Uh, so yeah, so we're in the studio, uh, and tonight we have a very interesting topic. Uh, I'm the relationship doc, so I'm very interested uh, in the lives of nurses and healthcare professionals uh, as we try to kind of navigate this new space uh, after during this pandemic. Not even after. I mean, some people think it may be after, but I still think we're in the middle. Uh, of a, a storm. So, so yeah, so not only was this challenging, but also it's also known that nurses have the highest rate of divorce, some of the highest rate of divorce. Uh, and you, you cluster that with this, uh, and you have an even more challenging... Perfect storm. <laughs> exactly, perfect storm. And we don't mean, you know, that being COVID, we mean that being a partner who who is thrust into some very um, some very challenging situations. Unique, right? Let's go unique. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we're gonna jump into it. Akeem, tell people about you. What do you do? Uh, how long have you been a nurse? Okay, so for those who don't know me, I'm Akeem. I have been a nurse that I just realized uh, six years. Uh, graduated six years ago. I started off working in uh, med surge tele and in psych at the same time. So I like to say my specialty is child adolescent psych. Um, but now I have switched over into compliance for the government. Um, and that's where I'm at right now. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So how, how, so how did you get interested in nursing? Because most men men, as they say, aren't interested in becoming nurses. You want me to tell my true story? Yes, tell your true story. This is live your life online. <laughs> so my true story of how I became a nurse. I originally went to school for international relations. I like to talk, I like to travel, and I like to eat other people's food. Um, but I got kicked out of that program, kind of sort of. Actually, they really got rid of the program, and I went over to try other things, and this was a struggle with my mother because my mother was like, well, you're not having an art degree. You need to have a degree that you can make some money with. So uh, I was like, well, I'll be a nutritionist. And I was working in an internship at a medical spa here in Atlanta. And when I was like, I'm gonna be a nutritionist, the nurse that I worked with there pulled me aside literally and goes, uh, they don't make any money. And then she, ran down her job, what she does, and how fun it was. And she was like, you'd be good at it. So I switched over my major, took my prereqs, and went through the battleground of nursing school. Nursing school is the hardest thing I've ever done in my life, by the way. I <laughs> agree. I think that uh, everybody who in the healthcare field, uh, especially nurses and doctors will just own that it's a challenging, uh, it's like challenging emotionally because one, you got people who are, to be quite honest about it, nurses who, um, who are like, you're not dying. Why are you complaining? You gotta see, uh, you should be happy and get out of my face. <laughs> get out of my face. Yeah, I will say that was probably one of the most challenging things. Mm -hmm. If I had to do it again, I probably would not. Wow. Not the school part. Like, would I trade being a nurse or anything? Absolutely not. But I don't think I would go back mm -hmm. through undergrad. But you're also talking to someone, which is a conversation for another day, who also had to sit out a year of nursing school, too. You know, I always when I'm talking to new grads or people who are considering nursing schools, I'm always the realist and like, this is what it looks like. Like I, you know, the thing we're talking about dating later on. So I was dating and was caught up and got kicked out of nursing school, but that's a story for another day. Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. I didn't get kicked out of nursing school, but I definitely had uh, some moments where 
Uh, I was I didn't do my best. Uh, that's seventy five. You know. Ain't no joke. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so now, so you were dating while you were in nursing school. Yeah. Which is all auto, automatically like a big X. I remember I'm, being told in nursing school you should not work, you should not date. Your life is dedicated to nursing at this point. So I worked, dated, had a social life. I do not recommend that for anybody in nursing school who's listening or watching this. It's horrible. Right. I remember. I remember actually the one of the professors pulling me aside before I even got into the nursing school, make it clear that to make it clear that she knew she heard about me and that I would not be attending Super Bowl parties, that I would not be going to homecoming, that I would not be <laughs> all of these things. Ooh, I had one in school. She was like, you're well liked and you're social. And I was like, I'm trying. Right. Right. So, now, so dating. So you, I guess you you went through some of the hardest part, by the way, uh, by trying to date in nursing school. Uh, so that already is a challenge. So you kind of probably took a little bit of that over into when you started working at the bedside. No, it was different. How different? Because when I was in nursing school, as bad as it sounds, like I wasn't studying like I probably should have. Mm -hmm. So I always had sleep and stuff like that. But when I became a nurse, I was always working. So like if I wasn't working, I was sleep. Mm -hmm. And so my time management became kind of different. Like I feel like once you become a nurse and you get that time management down, mm -hmm. everything around you becomes time management and priority. And that's kind of what happened to me. Like everything now as a nurse is time management and priority. But prior to it, there was no priority. It was kind of like, I'll get to it when I get to it. But now I always look at everything in that priority mm -hmm. type of lens. And that's where I'm at now. Yeah. So that's why I think that nursing school prepared me for my dating, for dating, actually. Okay. Because I, 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 I basically breathed nursing school. I ate nursing school. I picked up my nursing books. And when I went into then my nursing career, maybe three, four months afterwards, it just kind of really, that same level of, um, I won't say isolation, but that same level of prioritizing how I spend my time uh, kind of went over into that. And I think that, to be honest with you, a lot of my professors at the time were, were not just teaching, uh, but they were also still working as supervisors, working oh, as managers. <laughs> so, you know, nurses typically have more than one job. Let's yep. be quite honest about it, unfortunately. I missed, I missed that. Right. <laughs> so so that right there is already a challenge. You're dating somebody who already prioritizes their time. Uh, they look at uh, empathy in the sense of, you know, how sick or how well are you and how no, independent you should we be. We look at empathy as, do you need me currently? <laughs> that is how it is. Right, right. <laughs> yes, you're very right about that. You're very, yeah, yeah, that is definitely a part. Do you need me currently? Uh, and not just do you need me currently, but do you need me physically yes. like to do something? I think even more so, emotionally, nurses find it challenging uh, to... To, to, to be there, to be empathetic. And I will say, because I've switched over from bedside to non-clinical, I will say that's helped me a lot with uh, the very running joke of, is this an email or is this a meeting? Um, and I think nursing has really helped me with that. Because um, I view it as a lens of, do you need to see me face to face or can this be a verbal conversation or a quick email? Mm, right, so. right, wow. Uh, so, by the way, I just put up on the screen, by the way, today we are doing, I remember now to do the call-in show, by the way. So, please, please, please call in to the show with your questions. The number is, I forget my own number, uh, it's 864-91-NURSE. Uh, the number, again, is 864-91, what is the number? Uh, 68, 68. What? I got it. I got it. <laughs> I'm coming with it. <laughs> right. Exactly. So, so uh, Akeem uh, had called. 864-916-8773. Right. 
Yes, that's correct. Uh, so yeah, so so definitely make sure you call in the show. So yes, back to what our topic at hand. Now, okay, so are you currently dating? Currently dating, yes. All right. Now, is this a new boo? Uh, I mean, how is dating as a nurse now that you are actually in a different role? You're no longer at the bedside. You currently work in government, quality, compliance, which is a, which is in and itself, uh, you know, not really the, quite the same, but it is still a, in the title. Um, so I still view everything from the lens of a nurse um, mm -hmm. because you'll get um, – this is my caveat of saying nurses are needed everywhere in healthcare uh, because I get a lot of, oh, well, how did you know that? And then I'm like, oh, I'm a nurse. So they'll get an email from me with my credentials and they'll be like, oh, I should start asking you more questions or you'll realize some people just don't have that nursing piece mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. they make quality decisions or any type of compliance stuff. You're like, well, did you ask your nurse friend or did you ask a nurse on the floor or your mm -hmm. anything like that? You may have to speak closer oh, to the microphone. Oh, sorry if you couldn't hear me, but, <laughs> if you, uh, but did you ask someone like that? But I feel like I'm still the same mm -hmm. at the core. Okay. Just I don't have to see patients every day. I, instead of having, you know, six patients or 20-something patients or I'm in charge of a hospital, I view the entire state mm -hmm. as my patients. Oh wow, that's that's, a, that's how that's I look a at dope. It. That's dope way of looking at. So the entire state of your patients that's, are your patients. That's you have how a, I look at it. I, right. I really, um, a facility that I went to, um, I got to talk with the mm -hmm. uh, president of the board, and she said something very profound to me, and it stuck with me, where she viewed every patient coming in as her own, mm. as her own family, and then it stuck with me because I was like. I should view everybody in the state mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as my own. And that's how I view it. When I go in, someone's grandmother is, has now become my grandmother. I am in charge of what her health care looks like on mm -hmm. a larger scale. And that's how I view it. Right. Oh, wow. That's super dope. Now, one of the things, uh, another question is dating female nurses versus dating male nurses. Do you think there is a difference or do you think that we're one and the same? I think there are some differences, mm -hmm. but I think there are not some differences. I think there are some common things that we all share mm -hmm. because we are all nurses, but then of course, different personalities. I will also go ahead and throw this caveat out, ask them what specialty they have before dating them because that also <laughs> throws a little, a little flavor into it. Right, 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 right. So, I mean, so take, for instance, I'm a, I'm a cardiothoracic ICU nurse. Controlling. <laughs> yes, we can be quite controlling uh, <laughs> in cardiothoracic ICU. Uh, I mean, so oncology nurses. Special. No, I really like oncology nurses. Uh, first of all, dating a nurse is not bad at all. But I will say... It depends on the specialty. So let's say uh, I see you, you might be getting someone who is very structured, and they may bring that out. Um, an ER nurse is someone who is solution-oriented. I think they're all solution-oriented. I've, I rarely meet an ER nurse who's not solution-oriented, um, and I don't think I've dated an ER nurse, um, but they're just solution-oriented. med surge nurses, we are very much so, like, multifaceted. You know, they're... You might get this, you might get that. It's kind of a little hodgepodge. And then psych, my thing, we're just kind of free spirits. I just feel like we're free spirited. <laughs> so so you think psych nurses are free spirit. Okay. Uh let me think of one that uh okay, ortho nurses. Orthopedic so nurses. So I they're a little structured, but they're also kind of hodgepodge, you kind of like mm -hmm. med search nurses. I, I kind of throw ortho nurses. I'm sorry for any ortho nurses. I know you are a specialty, but I just think they're kind of med surgery. They are. They are med surgery. They would. They would say different, but they are kind of med surgery. It's kind of like ortho primary, mm -hmm. but I can still take care of this surgical patient. Right. Right. You know. Okay. Okay. I get it. I'm with it. So. Okay. So the similarities and the in dating female and male nurses. Yeah. Would you date a nurse? Have I dated a nurse is a better question. I would date a nurse personally. Uh huh. 
but that's because I'm a nurse. I I know what I'm getting myself into with dating a nurse. I know the questions to ask. I know kind of like where to look at. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I know what to do. I'm trying to. I'm actually trying to see if I dated a nurse, and I don't think I have. But okay, I would. I mean, I have. Uh, I I have just to be honest and transparent. Uh, I tried dating a another nurse. It was what was the specialty? <laughs> I see you. Mm. I see you, and really, I think even more. You put together oncology. I see you. Ooh, <laughs> right. So that sounds very like structured, but then it also sounds chaotic a little bit. Right. And then right. it also sounds like there was a lack of empathy probably there as well. Because mm -hmm. I feel like oncology nurses, out of all of us, have some of the highest uh, empathy fatigue. That's a term. Mm. If that's not a term, I would like to coin that right now. <laughs> empathy fatigue. Right. So they just, so it's not that, that they not, that they are not born with or they're in eight uh that they've been they've had to give so much care and so much love uh that they slowly that they lose that love or so we're pretty transparent here so mm -hmm. i will say i had a relationship when i was working night shift as a nurse mm -hmm. um and having six patients and also being a supervisor at another hospital I would always feel like I was giving my patients all of me mm -hmm. and looking back and we've had I've had this discussion with this person before looking back I had to apologize because I realized I had empathy fatigue and what I was giving to my patients and my co-workers I was not putting that effort at home because I was kind of like well you should be giving this to me anyway because like I'm out here doing what I can to save these people's lives and you should understand that I don't have it right now. Mm. Um, but I've moved out of that. Okay. That's some growth. So, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I agree. So that's definitely new growth. Uh, I'm, I'm interested though in kind of like, you know, what you said as it relates to kind of being emotionally there. Uh, when you're kind of emotionally fatigued? So I will say now, um, dating now, I'm very upfront about emotional fatigue. Mm -hmm. I'm very, very upfront about it. Um, my friends will tell you that I am. If you even say that you're interested in dating me, that's one of the first conversations that we have because a lot of people will be like, oh, you're a nurse, you're caring, and then they want to be hyper energetic with you and they want to feel like you're going to care for them. And the first thing out of their mouth is, I know if I get sick, you'll take care of me. And the first mm. response I have back is, so we should have a conversation. <laughs> right. Um, but that's it's simply because as a nurse, even though people are saying that you're getting paid for this, I think a lot of people don't understand that nurses are really giving of themselves. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You are giving physically, emotionally your energy where there are some fields where you're not giving all of that you are giving your time and your efforts but are you really giving your emotions or you're taking on emotions of family members you're taking on emotions of patients you have uh people who are in circumstances that you can that before i was a nurse i would never imagine um it was just not something that i would think about and then you have to take it off you are this person's support for days um mm -hmm. we've had a patient that was almost on our floor for a year Mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. no family, anything like that. So we were this man's support. Right, right. It got bad where my mom knew the man. Like, she was like, how's the guy on the floor? Right. And be like, you become this person. So sometimes when you work 12 hours and everyone else has worked, let me not say that because – it is a figment of your imagination if you believe nurses work 12 hours. Right. <laughs> right. That is what we document on paper for legal purposes. Um, most nurses are pushing minimum of 14-hour days. Right. Um, right. I used to work 16 hours, and those 16 hours are 16 hours of sheer emotion, physical work. Um, it's taxing on the brain because mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. are – constantly prioritizing, reassessing, and structuring things. So mm -hmm. the best of us, we're tired after those 16 hours. Right, 
Right. Uh, I think that, you know, in so then you throw coronavirus on top of that now because that's the whole point of this show. Uh, you throw the whole kind of the whole emotion, uh, the emotion, the challenge of being there emotionally for patients who are in the hospital right now who can't have their family present. Uh, I mean, shouts out to my uh, roommate who's also a nurse. Um, they, we, we have become the, our emotional support system, sometimes uh, helping our patients deal with being alone in the hospital, mm -hmm. sometimes helping, you know, being there for our colleagues uh, who yeah. are, who know that the patient's end is going to be bad uh, and that they're not walking out of there, uh, how that plays into all of it. Um, and I've had, uh, you know, a nurse, I had a nurse the other day, she she really said to me, like, you know, Wesley, I, I'm a bad nurse. I should have seen uh, that he was circling the drain, but I had four other patients. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've had people say that. I've said that about myself where, you know, like textbook, something textbook happened, and you should have seen it. And sometimes... We can't blame ourselves for mm, that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because, again, she probably gave and gave and gave, and especially like with COVID, like there are no words. There are no words for it. Right. Um, you know, essentially, and let's be honest. I'm guilty of this. I can be honest about this. Um, while it was kind of a new thing in China, everybody was like, "Oh, it's kind of like the flu." Cool. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, when it spread, oh, this is like flu times pneumonia with a little cardiac piece that goes with it. I'm like, this is a whole new ball game. This isn't flu. Like, right. I've taken care of flu patients. I can probably right. take care of flu patients in my sleep. Mm -hmm. What you guys are doing for COVID patients is above heroics. Right. It's above right. heroics. Right. Well, I'm going to play. I'm going to take a break. Uh, we're going to take a break and we're going to look at a video that I did, a slideshow uh, that I did. I'm going to try to not be emotional because it is like basically a slideshow of some of the um, some of the, like the experiences. Mass, huh? Is it like that mass commercial? Kind of like that.
yeah, that's a pretty deep. It is a pretty deep song. I, I mean, I love the fact um, that she talked about you come through the door at 6 a.m. First off, our shift starts at 7. Uh, but yeah. to be uh, let's be honest, as soon as you walk through the door to get an assignment, uh, people are already looking for you. <laughs> Let me tell you now, when I work night shift, you better be walking through that door. You better be ready at 7 because I'm not having it. Right, 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 right. That, that, that's <laughs> another thing, by the way. Nurses, even though we're at work uh, and we're taking care of these patients, sometimes we don't even take care of one another. Oh, we we'll get there. Um, right. <laughs> before we go there, I do want to say um, thank you for everyone who's staying home and the videos that I've seen, um, particularly that I've seen in Atlanta and I've seen it in New York too, mm -hmm. where you know people are standing on their balconies when they're near hospitals and clapping and shooting fireworks. Mm -hmm. I'm a big component of it's always the little things that matter. Um, like for me, a special moment in nursing was I took care of a patient and they bought me this gold coin that I keep on my fireplace. Mm -hmm. um, pretty much was saying like, you changed my life. The next person who changes your life, give them this coin. Like little things wow. like that. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, if I was walking out of the hospital at, at probably 8.30, mm -hmm. um, that would mean something to me. That would actually make me want to come back personally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, if I heard that, I would it would make me feel better about what I was going through. Mm -hmm. So thank you for the people who understand that, who are doing those things. Right. I, I mean, um, and we have so many stories like that that make it so difficult for, I feel like, us to, to be emotionally distant, uh, maintain a sense of our own personal emotions at work. Uh, I mean, I've had patients make like me a cross and say I'm praying for you and I'm like wow here you are in this bed and quite honestly I'm just thinking about one particular patient who wasn't going to walk out of that hospital to be honest with you uh, and yet he was there praying for me and praying for the work yeah. uh, that I'm doing and I'm like how it, you know. How does that person find the strength to say I know I'm not walking out but hey right, right. I need you to go help the next person right so, so back to the song. So 6 a.m., you walk through the door. People are already expecting you. you your shift hasn't even started yet. I love to the, um, the, the, the guy, Darren Knight, who does the thing about nurses. And he, he's screaming in one of his clips that, you know, I just walked through the door. The, the, my car isn't even, isn't even cold yet. <laughs> so I just want to be honest. I was definitely the night shift nurse who waited by the time clock for you to come <laughs> in and I would say, put your stuff down. I'm ready to go. <laughs> right. Right. That's me. Sorry. Uh, wow. So, so now what are the tips you think? What is the tips? Well, actually, you know what? I'm sorry. I forgot. I keep going, forgetting sometimes to go to the comments. Uh, Derek says, Dating a nurse takes patience. However, once you get an understanding of how they flow, uh, work slash life balance, it works. You're Smiley nurse? face. You're a nurse, Derek? Huh? Derek's a nurse? I think Derek, Derek dates a nurse. Okay. Um, it's kind of like just what it looks like but from the But that is a, a true thing. Uh-huh. Once you... Each nurse is innately different. Of course, we're all different. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I think the key is not trying to change that person's flow, mm -hmm. especially if it's a night shift nurse. Uh, don't don't even touch a night shift nurse flow. <laughs> um, right. Observing it and finding where you fit into the flow and then asking, I see you have this time. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. what I think personally. Okay. Um, seeing where you fit into the flow because I personally think nurses are master prioritizer and time management people. Mm -hmm. But, you know, asking that question. Mm. Wow. Uh, hi, Sarah. Thank you for joining. Sarah says, hi, damn, that's awesome. Uh, this is a family show. Sorry, I should probably cuss. Uh, WSPP. I have no idea what that means. P. Lewis, hi, how are you? Sean Coates, hi, how are you? Uh, Mar, two crack. Ooh, some of this stuff is, some of these people have some interesting 
Usernames. Uh, hello, how are you? Uh, <laughs> Brown Skin John. Hey, thank you for shouting me out. Phantom Bruce uh, underscore 23. Uh, thanks for shouting me out. But yeah, I'm sorry. I, I try to go to the comments as much as possible. Sometimes they don't stream through. Um, so so what does it take to, to successfully date a nurse? Or for a nurse, actually, let's talk to our nurses, what can you learn, what have you learned in dating uh, regular, should I say regular people? That sounds like I would Ooh, that sounds really bad, regular people. <laughs> people who can't save their own lives, no. no, no. <laughs> right. Um, I can say where my growth has come from. Um, my growth has come from being honest about where I am. Mm -hmm. So again, Mm -hmm. I, as a person, as a lot of people don't know until they really get to know me, is I have the empathy guard that you may see some nurses have where, um, which I was dating someone who pointed it out to me. At work, I am helping all of my colleagues. I am helping all of the techs. I am going 200% for each patient. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm making sure everything is timely when I got home, it was, I mean, you want to go eat? You know, mm -hmm. and there was no thought, there was none of that. And so now I've worked with being upfront, like even dating now, like I have moments where I'm just like, I just want to sit on the couch, decompress, I don't want to do anything. Um, but then I realized I probably should say, hey, you look really nice today. Or we did this thing the other day and I probably did not respond in the way that you wanted me to respond in that moment. However, right now I'm saying I really appreciated it. You know, mm. um, taking those steps to really kind of be an adult um, and go back and take ownership for the times that I do have a lack of empathy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And just owning that. Right. So, so, you, but you have to be really conscious about. You, you have to be deliberate. very conscious, uh -huh. and you know, I think. To be honest, because I'm a psych nurse, I'm always, I hate to say it, I'm always analyzing. Mm -hmm, it's, mm -hmm. I'm always analyzing everything. So sometimes I will go back and look at a situation internally and I'm like, you know, like my Chrissy Teigen face. And, right. um, <laughs> Your Christy Teigen and face. And I'm trying <laughs> to analyze it and say, I could have done better. I emotionally could have done better. And if I was not viewing it through my nursing lens, I probably would have responded a little differently. Because sometimes I'm like, you're not dying. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, how does the nurse who is emotionally fatigued and says and either knows or unconsciously knows, I'm spent. I can't do, I can't give anything, I can't give anything else to anyone else after, outside of my work, outside of the work that I do. That nurse needs to, one, recharge. It's time to go on vacation or if you can. Um, mm -hmm. But you also need to be honest in a space with the other person. So I would not suggest you actively go look for relationship opportunities if you can't provide those things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but if someone approaches you, you need to be upfront. I'm working, you know, 12 plus hours a day. I'm giving all of this at work. When I come home, I'm tired. Uh, with COVID, I'm working seven days a week right now. I can't do this. This is what I have to offer. Mm -hmm. To be, uh, to be, you have to be honest because some people they don't need you in 24 hours. They may only need to talk to you for two hours a day, or hey, let's grab dinner. Or you, those mm -hmm. type of things. You just have to be upfront. I think upfront honesty is what's important. Right. Okay. All right. I like that. I like that. Well, let's go see what we have out here. I'm going to go to, let's go to the, sorry, I guys, I'm trying to manage all these things. Let's see what we got. He literally uh, has a lot of things going on. Hmm? <laughs> a lot of things on this it screen. is a lot of things going on like here. If you see me looking at uh, the screen, I'm looking at the screen. It, it's literally way too much, way too many things going on. Uh, it's way too many things going on. Tyrus, thanks, bro, for shouting me out, Prince. Uh, 
What else? Let's make sure I'm checking all of these things. This Listen, is hard. Y'all need to get these questions live. <laughs> uh, don't be trying to hop in my inbox talking about I got some nursing question because I'm gonna be like, I can't answer them right now. I don't. You know what the funny thing is? I never really understand how these comments come in. Uh, Like, does it come from the top or does it come from the bottom? Oh, I can. We can solve that problem. You, you. I'm just gonna look and see. Like, it's just because I'm. I'm trying to, you know, live in a millennial world and. I'm such. uh, (laughs) And at the same time, so I can't uh, quite tell because it's a delay. So. Oh yeah, that that's the, that is the headache. It is a bit of a delay, but anyways, I can't. You know, thank you guys. Uh, definitely, if you think of anything, I hope I didn't miss anyone. I'm super duper uber sorry. Uh, if I did, have an amazing amazing day. All right, and we will talk to you guys later. Uh, and I guess we'll hang out on the podcast and talk. Are you okay to hang out on the podcast yeah. and talk? I'm Great, good. I love hanging out on the podcast it's and like talk. A, so it's like a little kickback. I like it. Exactly. So switch over to the podcast. Queen B, won't no smoke with me. Okay. Then turn this motherfucker up 800 degree. A whole team eat. Chef's cause she's a treat. Ooh, she's so bougie, bougie. Boom, never tease. I'm a savage. Had a tooth nasty. Talk big shit, but my bank account match it. Hood, but I'm classy. Rich, but I'm ratchet. Haters kept my name in their mouth, not a gagging. Bougie. He say the way that thing move is a movie. I told that boy we gotta keep it lowly, me the room key. I done bled the block and now it's hot, bitch, I'm Tunji. I'm mood and I'm moody. I'm a savage. Classy, bougie, ratchet. Sassy, moody, nasty. Acting stupid, what was happening? What was, what was happening? Bitch, I'm a savage. Classy, bougie, ratchet. Sassy, moody, nasty. Stupid, what was happening? Bitch, what was happening? Hips, tick, tock, when I dance. dance. On that demon time, she might start her OnlyFans. Only Big B and that B stand for bands. If you want to see some real ass, baby, here's your chance. I say left cheek, right cheek, drop it low, then swing. Texas up.